Hi, welcome to my channel, Made by BJX. You guys like blew up my TikTok video. I got like 1.3 million views on it and over 1,500 comments. Um, this is my TikTok. So yeah, I got tons of demands for a tutorial or customs. And honestly, it was an experimental top. It was not something I had a pattern for. I just kind of freestyled it, which is what I do with most of my tops. I just kind of went for it and just felt it out. For this tutorial, I'm gonna try to recreate that. Also, somebody in the comments said that I should make one in pink and black. And so instead of duplicating the orange and black, I made this tutorial with pink. Since it is currently September 18th, um, I want to hurry up and get this tutorial out because I know a lot of you guys want to make this for Halloween or sell it for Halloween. So here it is. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Here's a quick glimpse at all the materials I used to make this project. Originally, I used this kind of orange for the first jack-o'-lantern top that I made. It's called Hot Orange and it's a worsted weight 4 yarn. Um, however, I used a different color called Coral Rose and this is just some leftover yarn that I had. But it's by the same brand, Lily Sugar and Cream. To get started, I'm going to make my slip knot and for a size small, I'm going to chain 13, however if you're trying to make another size then I have the recommended chain links posted here. After you've made your foundation chain, you're going to insert a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and continue single crocheting all the way down and stop before you reach the last chain. I've approached the last chain, and here I will be inserting three single crochet all into that same chain space. This is where we're going to start using our stitch marker. These are the three stitches I just put into that space, and we're going to insert the stitch marker into the middle loop. Continue single crocheting along the opposite side of your foundation chain all the way down. Now would be a great time to check your work and make sure you have the same amount of stitches on opposite sides of your stitch marker. For this size small, I have 12 stitches on both sides. To begin our second row, we are going to chain one, turn your work, and insert a single crochet into the very first stitch. Continue single crocheting all along the side until you reach your stitch marker. Once you reach your stitch marker, go ahead and remove it and insert three single crochets into the same middle stitch. You will repeat this process every time you encounter your stitch marker. Don't forget to replace your stitch marker into the middle stitch. Continue single crocheting along the opposite side until you reach the end. Okay. 
that completes our second row of single crochets. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate one more row and then you guys can continue on for however many rows you need to complete your bra cup size. I'll have the recommended row counts for every size posted here while I'm doing this. I've just finished my third row of single crochet. Since I'm making a size small, I have eight more left to go. I'll go ahead and finish this off and I'll meet you guys once I'm done. After you've completed all of your rows, go ahead and secure your yarn off by cutting the string and just pulling your yarn through completely. Next, you will need to make an identical bra cup just like your first one. If you're unsure if your bra cups are identical, then you can count the stitches along the opposite side of your stitch marker. They should both be the same, and for the size small, I have 22 stitches along the side. Next, we're going to work on the body, so turn your bra cups upside down facing the same direction. Grab your yarn again and create your slip knot. And here we're going to chain 10. After you've chained 10, go ahead and grab one of your bra cups and we're going to insert a hook into the last stitch that we made on that bra cup and we're going to leave a slip stitch. Continue single crocheting all along the bottom of your bra cup and I'll meet you at the end. Once you've finished crocheting all along the bottom, you're going to insert a single crochet into the very last stitch along the side. Now, to connect our bra cups, you're basically going to repeat what we did for the first cup by inserting your hook into the last stitch we made, leaving a slip stitch, and then single crocheting all along the bottom. Don't forget to leave a single crochet in the very last stitch along the edge. And this is what your work should be looking like at this point. You should have a really clean edge. From here, we are going to chain 11. Single crochet into the second chain from the hook and continue single crocheting all the way down this chain until you meet your bra cup again. Continue single crocheting along the bottom of your bralette all the way until we reach the middle point where they connect. We're gonna skip over the slip stitch we made. Now 
Once you reach that slip stitch in the middle, you can go ahead and continue single crocheting right into the next bra cup and finish it all the way down until you reach the end. Once you've finished your first row of single crochets, this is what your work should be looking like at this point. We're going to be adding a whole bunch more of single crochet rows. Um, I don't keep count of that exactly, it just measures out to be 5 to 6 inches long. This part can seem a little bit tedious because they are single crochets and they do take a while to work up, but we want those tight stitches because it helps us with our sewing later with the jack o' lantern face. But I'll go ahead and give you an idea of how many rows I made. So here's what it looks like whenever I was done with the body. Um, you can see that it measured out to be about five and a half inches long. And a better comparison is it, it's the same length as the bra cup. So hopefully that's a pretty good indicator for you to know how long to make the body portion. Next, we're going to begin working on the jack-o'-lantern face. So go ahead and get your black yarn out and create a slip knot. We're going to start with the triangle eye. So we're going to chain two. Insert a single crochet into the first stitch. Right here, I usually like to tighten the tail a little bit. Chain one, turn your work, then insert two single crochet into the same stitch. This is considered an increase stitch. Next, we're going to chain one. Do another increase stitch, so put two single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. There should be four single crochet total. For our next row, we will not be increasing, so we are going to chain one and we're going to put single crochets into all four of those stitches. And for the rest of this triangle, we're basically going to do that pattern of increase rows and single crochet rows. So for the next row, chain one again and insert two single crochet into the first stitch. Insert one single crochet into the next two stitches. And on the last stitch, insert two single crochet for the increase. You should have six stitches total. So for our next row, we're just going to chain one and do only single crochets into every stitch. Here's what your work should be looking like so far, and it's actually the perfect size for the nose triangle, so whenever you get to that point, you can rewind and stop here, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this triangle for the size for the eye. So chain one again, and we're going to do an increase row, so insert two single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into all of the stitches until you reach the last one, which should have two. I'm going to continue this pattern for about six more rows, alternating between single crochet rows and increase rows until I reach the end.
Here is what your triangle should look like once you finish making all of your rows. To secure off your work, you're going to chain one and leave a really long tail for this one because this is the string you'll use to sew the eye into your work. Make sure that you pull the string through because you don't want your work to unravel. Next, you'll need to make an identical triangle for the other eye and then a smaller triangle for the nose. This is what it should look like when all three of them are completed. Next, we're going to begin working on the mouth portion and to get an idea of the shapes we're going to start with, as you can see on this far corner, we're going to begin a triangle shape just like we did with the eyes. And we'll go into further detail on how to do these teeth cutout shapes. So to get started again, uh, make a slip knot and chain two. Insert one single crochet into the first stitch. Tighten your tail and then chain one. Turn your work and insert two single crochet into that stitch. Chain one, turn your work. Insert two single crochet into the first stitch and then insert two single crochet into the next stitch. There should be four single crochet total. For the next row, we're going to just do a row of single crochets. So chain one and insert one single crochet into the next four stitches. For our next row, chain one, and we're going to insert one single crochet into the first three stitches. And on our very last stitch, we're gonna do an increase. So insert two single crochet into the last stitch. Our next row is going to be one single crochets only. So go ahead and chain one and single crochet into all five stitches. For the next row, chain one, single crochet into the first four stitches and when you reach the last stitch you're going to do an increase and insert two single crochet chain one for the next row and single crochet into the next six stitches And as you can see, we are starting to form sort of a corner of the mouth shape for our jack-o'-lantern. Chain one again and insert one single crochet into all the stitches all the way down, which should be six stitches total.
Next, we're going to start forming the cutouts for the teeth. So chain one and single crochet into the first three stitches. From here, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and insert a single crochet into those three stitches. For the next row, chain one again, insert a single crochet into the next three stitches. Next, we will need to chain four. Single crochet into the second chain from the hook and single crochet into the next two chains. Continue single crocheting all the way down the last three stitches. And now you can see how this pattern makes the teeth cut out shapes. From here, we are going to chain one and insert a single crochet into the next six stitches. Next, we are going to make another teeth cutout shape. So chain one and insert one single crochet into the first three stitches. Chain one, turn your work and insert one single crochet into those three stitches. Chain one again, turn your work and single crochet into those three stitches. And then we're going to chain four and work all the way back down again. So here I'm inserting a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and into those next two chains and then single crocheting into the last three and finishing off that row. Next I'm going to chain one and insert one single crochet into the next six stitches. Here is what your work should be looking like so far. As you can see, we have one of the top teeth and one of the bottom teeth. And our next row, we're going to make another cutout for the top teeth. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the footage for the rest of the teeth cutouts. And then I'll demonstrate how to make the other corner of the mouth.
I have just finished making all the teeth cutouts and now we need to start tapering off the corner of the mouth. So chain one and insert one single crochet into the first four stitches. Next we are going to do a decrease stitch. So insert your hook and pull the yarn through and insert your hook into the next stitch, pull your yarn through again and pull your yarn through those three loops. For the next row, we will need to chain one, turn your work, and we're going to start with a decrease. So insert your hook, pull your yarn through, insert your hook into the next stitch, and pull your yarn through all three. Then you'll continue single crocheting into the next three stitches. For the next row, chain one, Turn your work and single crochet into the first two stitches. And then we are going to decrease on those last two stitches. Chain one, turn your work, start with another decrease. Single crochet into the last stitch. For our last row, we are going to chain one and then decrease into those two single crochets. This is what our work should look like now that we have finished making the entire mouth. Um, it can get a little twisted up, so you'll have to stretch it out a little bit to make the perfect square forms for the teeth cutouts. Next, I'm going to quickly demonstrate sewing in the eye patch. I'm not that great at sewing, so hopefully you guys get the gist of it, but I'm placing the tip of the eye on the center of the bra cup. Also, I was trying to secure the tip of it with my stitch marker, which really wasn't that necessary. You guys don't have to do that. I was just trying to keep it in place, but it really keeps itself in place. So here we go with my speedy, messy stitch work. After you're done sewing the entire perimeter of the triangle shape, make sure that you uh, weave in the tails. Don't be messy. Next, you're going to repeat exactly what you did on the other bra cup with the second eye patch, and this is what it should look like. Now I'm going to speedy sew through the nose. Lastly, we have to sew on the mouth, and the corners of the mouth should actually align with the corners of the eye patches, so that should be a good indicator of where you should place it. 
I'm not going to be speedy sewing this on camera. I'm going to sew this off camera because it's going to take a while, but basically I'm going to go all the way around each teeth cut out and then all along the corners and then along the bottom teeth cut out. And here's what it looks like whenever I was done. I said I was not a good sewer and it shows, but that's okay. I bet you guys are better than me and I'd love to see what you guys make whenever you're finished. Next, we're gonna start working up the sides for the straps and then along the side of the body. And then we're gonna start making this little peacock ribbing along the edges too. So to get started, I actually started on the back bottom corner. I kind of wish that I started um, with the front facing up, but I didn't. Um, so go ahead and insert your hook into the very last stitch. Pull the yarn all the way through and you're going to tie a knot so that it will stay there securely. Insert your hook again. Pull your yarn through and we are going to chain three. Next, we're going to skip a space and insert a double crochet into the stitch after that. This should create a little chain space for you to be able to lace your straps in between. Next, we are going to insert a double crochet into the next stitch and we're going to add those double crochets all along the side until we reach just about the middle point. Once you reach the middle point, go ahead and chain one, skip a space, and then insert a double crochet into the stitch after that. That's going to create another uh, chain space for you to be able to insert your laces through. Then continue double crocheting all the way until you reach almost the end of the side. Here you will chain one, and then insert your last double crochet. And now you should have three spaces for you to lace your strap up in between. Now we're going to start working along the side of the body. So chain one, insert two single crochet into that chain space, and then continue single crocheting onto the pink portion of the body. Before you begin crocheting on the bra cup, you're going to do a decrease right here in the corner. So insert your hook, pull your yarn through, insert your hook onto the bra cup, and then pull your yarn through those three loops. That helps make the corner crease a little bit. Next, we are going to insert one single crochet into the next four stitches. On the fourth stitch, we're going to begin making a peacock stitch. So we are going to chain three. And then we are going to insert our hook into the front of those two loops that you can see right there. Pull your yarn through those two loops. And then slip stitch back through. Single crochet into the next four stitches. On the fourth stitch, make another peacock, so chain three. 
Insert your hook into the front of those two loops. Pull your yarn through and then slip stitch. Repeat this pattern all the way up until you reach the tip of your bra cup. Here I am inserting my last single crochet at the very tip of my bra cup. That's where I would have had my stitch marker if I had left it in there. This is what your work should be looking like at this point. From here we are going to chain 81. After you have chained 81, go ahead and slip stitch down all 80 chains until you reach the tip of your bra cup. After you have completed slip stitching down the entire chain, Insert one more single crochet into the same stitch that you left off, which should have been the middle stitch. Next, we are going to single crochet into the next three stitches. On the third stitch, we're going to do a picot stitch. From here, we're going to repeat the pattern that we did on the opposite side. So we're going to insert four single crochet, leaving a picot stitch on the fourth crochet. Here I am finishing the edging on my first bra cup. Here I was just sort of eyeballing where my next stitches needed to go. I placed a single crochet right there in the middle and I wanted these to be symmetrical so I'm going to insert another four single crochet into the next four stitches. Now I'm placing a picot stitch on the fourth crochet that I inserted, and I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way up until I reach the tip basically repeating exactly what I did on the first bra cup with the strap and everything. To get started on the sides, I'm going to chain three, skip a space, and then insert a double crochet into the space after that just like I did on the opposite side of the body. And then I'm going to double crochet all the way until I reach a good middle point for me to make another chain, which I will therefore chain one, skip a space, and then insert another double crochet. Continue double crocheting until you reach almost the end and then you will chain one and then leave your very last double crochet on the end. Here you can see we have those three chain spaces for the laces to go through. Next we're going to work along the bottom. So chain one and insert two single crochet into that chain space. Next insert a single crochet into the next three stitches.
On the third stitch, we're going to make a peacock stitch. So chain three, insert your hook into the front of those two loops, pull your yarn through and slip stitch. Continue single crocheting into the next four stitches. And on the fourth stitch, we're going to create a peacock again. Repeat this pattern all the way down until you reach the opposite end. The last thing you'll have to do is weaving in all of your tails. I have three tails that I have to weave through and I'm just gonna speedy sew. And here is the final result. Almost looks identical to the first one. For the straps, I ended up chaining 250. Yes, I counted. And here I'm going to speedy lace it up. That concludes our tutorial for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe please. I would also love to see what you guys made from this tutorial so tag me in any photos that you post online. Here are all of my handles and I look forward to making another tutorial for you guys.